So, we are a couple of sophisticated motherfuckers right now. Welcome to Frolly Comi Bully. Mm. And um, yes, we thought we'd rise rise above our usual um, ass fetish comics. <laughs> Oh, okay. You're having a go at me now for giving you the best. Oh, no, no. I, I'm thanking you from the bottom <laughs> of my ball bag, Padruna. <laughs> but, you know, mm-hmm. we like to mix mm-hmm. it up. Mm-hmm. So this time, we're taking the high road mm-hmm. with uh, Etienne Davidou's The Initiates, mm-hmm. a comic artist and a wine artist, artisan exchange mm-hmm. jobs. Mm-hmm. Not really, though. Uh, but no. as it turns out, I'm uh, not sure but... uh, if the other guy prepared a <laughs> bottle of wine that tells you the history of comics. <laughs> yeah, as you drink it. Yes, uh, but, but yeah. they definitely do enter each other's lives in in a pretty meaningful way. Yes, this is uh, Etienne Davidou, who is a uh, is uh, they're both French as a mm-hmm. comic artist, and Richard Leroy, right, who is the wine maker mm-hmm. so basically um as as you can see from these uh, opening panels they decide to make a little pact to um hey can i come and hang out and and uh, see you making wine and he goes sure and then you can watch me make some comics or something i mean it's a well done it in i mean what a way to score yourself um a couple of years of delicious wine drinking or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a great idea. I think I might uh, con <laughs> some wine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so so yeah, so basically that's the setup that uh, one introduces the other to the world of wine, the other introduces the other one to the world of comics because the, he knows nothing of comics, right, as Richard Leroy. Um, mm-hmm. And Etienne Davidou is, I'm guessing he's a a regular wine drinker like the rest of us, but not mm-hmm. not an expert. Yeah. It's not right? sommelier. No. Um, he, so, he talks uh, about the fact that like he loses his ability mm-hmm. to distinguish between the wines very early in the wine tasting. Yes. He's just not really... <clears throat> uh, After the first five or six. Uh, and I, I can... Uh, yeah, that's something. I've been to like a wine bar one time with a friend of mine. And uh, like, yeah. After the first few, you're like, well, bring it on, but... I don't well, yeah, really I don't. know the difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you say, smoky shoelaces. Yeah. Note, yeah. <laughs> notes sandwich. of orange. Yeah. Notes of orange rind and uh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. A hint of Casper the friendly ghost. Or yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll just enjoy drinking you. Carry on. Um so mm-hmm. This has been translated from the French by Nantier Bill. Minostichin graphic novels. Um, mm-hmm. I looked them up actually. The NBM pub um, website, and even though I'd never, especially out of New York, I'd never heard of them before. But they seem to have been going nope. for quite a while because, uh, especially okay. their. Uh, obviously, I, I I I zeroed in on their erotic uh, series. Okay. Of, um, because it, it's all translated comics, right? And they, um, yeah, mm-hmm. they seem to have been. Putting out um, like erotic comics, at least from maybe the nineties. Okay. So I was well, wondering if you'd ever come across. Um... Not that I'm aware, but but it's you know we I'm sure we've talked about this before on the show, but like you know Fantagraphics, for example, who publishes you know Dan Klaus and and a lot mm-hmm. of the kind of you know the uh, you know the the uh, what's the, the the love and rockets guys Gilbert and, and Jaime Hernandez and mm. you know a lot of the kind of cutting edge and really interesting comics underground comics I guess of the last uh, 30 40 years um they really stayed afloat because of um their imprint Eros comics mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like they they produce masses of hardcore smut <laughs> comics and that right. allowed them to do the the high end you know uh, prestige stuff that they did, right? Like they would right. be they wouldn't be able to do it without that, and so they they publish a lot of Japanese you know um, uh, you know hentai stuff and and then yeah, uh, in fact they would even have sometimes I some of the most interesting stuff for me was when they would have their main stable of people 
and they were like, yeah, could you also do, so I really like, um, I think it's uh, one of the Hernandez brothers did a, a series called Birdland that I love. Mm. It's a hilarious porn comic kind of pastiche of telenovela, you know, Mexican like soap opera stuff with nice. hardcore all the way through. Um, it's really smutty and fun. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so anyway, I, I, I'm not surprised to hear that these guys, I think it is the bread and butter. That's the right. unspoken bread and butter. Of the I'm just surprised that you'd not heard of them because they've been around for a while. Um, I, I certainly hadn't, but um, yeah. I'm interested to have a little sift through their catalogue. They've got some interesting looking stuff. But in, yeah, so in this case, um, he, he goes and hangs out at his vineyard and we watch the winemaking mm -hmm. process from beginning to end uh which mm -hmm. is very interesting actually yes and then he gives him some comics every now and again and, <laughs> and he does and they go, he takes, yes he, he takes, takes them to meet to, uh comic book artists, artists and writers and also takes them to you know, well, he takes them to the publisher and that was interesting to me actually because you know just to see yeah. the process of, of like the printing presses themselves um and also he takes them to conventions right which are right. you know comic book artist stock and trade writers right going to cons quite amusing as well that he's not convinced by mobius yeah mobius nor alan moore's watchmen which there's a funny scene right. of him just passing out in bed and then it's pretty clear he just doesn't finish it he's like that's right he doesn't have much time for the the sf and high end he's much more interested in the 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 more um you know realistic yeah um, well, fact, at the, one, at the back of the book as well there's actually a list of uh everything drunk and red mm -hmm. uh, and actually i'm gonna this list may prove invaluable because they do mention some very interesting sounding comics which i i only knew like obviously uh spiegelman's mouse yes and mobius but a lot of stuff i didn't know a lot of the french stuff oh. was new to me and i i do i was wondering if you would have wanted to do i was interested it comes up quite near the end of the book the the one about um the afghan like the 1980s yes, afghan the photographer concert. right yeah yeah, that yeah, sounded yeah quite interesting i'm definitely up for that uh, okay yeah assuming so, it's translated um yeah no that definitely sounds good um so i had an enormously good time reading mm -hmm. like i have mm -hmm. to admit um there's something very it's i mean in some ways it's pretty straightforward mm -hmm. and simplistic, you know, bit of a couple of bit of a bromance over mm -hmm. a couple of middle-aged dudes and comics. And you definitely mm -hmm. could accuse it of being ever indulgent. so middle class and kind of slightly indulgent. Touch. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but god damn it if it isn't, I mean, yes, I want to go and hang out. Mm -hmm. Uh, valley full of wine and, and just tootle mm -hmm. about and, and mm -hmm. the thing that goes unmentioned but I'm sure I'm, there must be some drink driving going on in between the parts ah, yes. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> how they get from here to there because you know mm -hmm. they're drinking the whole time right and mm -hmm. I found funny that as much as they are kind of interested in things like talking about the soil and stuff mm -hmm. like that it doesn't take too long and it, uh, would you like to sample the cell yes <laughs> <laughs> like they're there, yeah. like mm, yes, very interesting. The soil, ah, yes, this is good. So take a walk and talk about this. Would you like to go to the cellar? Yes, like, <laughs> and they're there for the rest mm -hmm. of the day, right? Like, uh, yes, yeah, getting, getting, getting slowly, slowly, slowly bombed. Yes, mm -hmm. and and occasionally talking about comics every now and again, but mostly talking about wine. But but i enjoy i enjoyed honestly because it's quite it's quite large you know i mm -hmm. have to admit by the time it's finished i could have read oh yeah book. i could have carried yeah. on i just mm -hmm. enjoyed maybe it's, it's a projection I'm, I'm currently on the wagon as well so there might be a little mm -hmm. bit of that i was kind of jones in for a nice glass of red mm -hmm. uh, while mm -hmm. reading it but um no it's, it's it's a good example of i think what you know if you if you're if if you are just stuck on a diet of what you tend to think comics mostly do, it's a really good mm -hmm. example of a graphic novel yeah. doing something else. Other things comics yeah. can do, yes. In fact, just the back of it is funny when you look at it and it says like, you know, um, graphic novel, nonfiction, winemaking slash comic art. It's like, mm. 
not not something you necessarily immediately think of. Although the one thing I will say that I think the French and the Japanese have in common is an ability to see comics in a much broader way as co comics be, yeah. as capable yeah. of dealing with you know. So I mean, we know that there's tons of Japanese comics about sort of slice of life work related yeah. stuff, yeah. like which is yeah. I think um, maybe not just only specifically France as well. I get the feeling that. Yeah, Europe, maybe Europe. Generally. Yeah, in generally, uh, the spandex kind of like it's either it's either got to be like it feels like feels like North America and England are a little bit more like you know in England comics can be war comics or they can be science fiction comics or they can be you know children's comedy comics right mm. um, but I don't know that there's been a lot you know outside of very specific people maybe you know um right right doing that kind of stuff right in in the in the comics field mm, yeah um and america it's even more limited i think it's either just the underground alternative stuff and the superhero stuff and there's yeah i was one i mean i don't know how <clears throat> like <clears throat> excuse me i don't know how need a glass of wine i don't know um how mainstream something like this would be in France. I mean, I, I know another one of his comics is a Lulu. Mm -hmm. Lulu Anew is the English. There's English. That was turned into quite a big deal film. In oh, France. okay. Right. So, but, but yeah, but I don't know to what extent. Um, I mean, because the thing you mentioned, so in Japan, for the other thing you will notice in Japan as well is people unashamedly read comics yes like on a adults, train or something yeah. like that but mm. i don't know if that's something you see in europe people reading comics on public i i, I feel as if even even though you're right there's like uh, uh um there is uh there's more of a uh, acceptance of a broader type of comic mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still wondering if in general the the reading of comics is still marginal Mm, okay yeah uh, certainly compared to japan anyway um, mm, yeah but i don't think any culture or country has ever taken to comics the way japan did uh, whether so maybe. ubiquitous um but it's funny so for me one of the things that was strange about this book was that it really brought me back to that um summer that i worked on a winery mm. um like because i mean so i mean the drawing is really big. It's, it's all black and white mm. and it's all kind of um it looks to me like it's maybe watercolors, possibly, or I mean, like I, I'm not sure, but like it has the feeling of, of sort of like a yeah, gray tone, very block, soft you know? pencil or something. Yeah. Um, so it, um, it's uh, yeah. So it's only kind of lots of beautiful landscapes, lots of these gorgeous kind of vistas of these, um, you know, uh, the wineries, the vines in rows, mm. um, and so yeah. When I was um, basically my last year of art school or second last year of art school uh it reached the summer and you you get four months off as a university student right so it's um because you've been working so hard well yeah yeah you know so it's um so yeah the semester or whatever it runs and then yeah you got you got four months off so i was looking for jobs and uh i ended up getting a job at a winery which is the um, most art school job uh, you could get right yeah uh, um, but the funny thing was that, that so that it was it was an organic winery. And this, this kind of comes up. Yeah. This comes up in the in the in the book. This did kind of these wear, questions around. Did you wear a beret? I did not. No. Oh. Um, so I mean, I was basically it was it was I was initially hired on as <clears> as a farm as a farm laborer, pretty much. Um, and uh, and once I got on, uh, I ended up talking to friends of mine and everyone was like no one could find a job that summer so a bunch of us like my friend scott and tavis and ed where was like, this where was this Kelowna, british columbia Kelowna, um, okay. so ed brisson who went on to you know is now a, a famous comic artist and writer in his own um oh here we go is this the scandalous bit uh where you talk about famous marvel comics artist you have photographs of him eating his own shit or something uh no i don't oh, uh um, no um not so, that yeah. feeling anyway then. no so and yeah and then my mate uh paul who is the star of um 
uh, meat market. There was a whole yes. bunch of us all ended up working up on this winery at the same time. And um, and it was a fucking amazing job. I mean, it was hard, physical labor, um, but it was also like, I mean, just working out in the outdoors, just like, you know, sweeping Vista down to the lake um, and just, uh, and then drinking, like, well, getting, I got free wine mm. um, at the end of every work day. Um, so, yeah, so it was fine. I remember. Do you not have good wines? Yes, Cologne is quite famous. It has a very kind of like a uh, sort of arid Sicilian type of soil. Mm. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably one of Canada's two main wine growing regions. One is Niagara, where the falls are, mm. and the other is Kelowna, uh, the Okanagan Valley. And it's, it's pretty famous. So Quails Gate Winery, which is the winery I worked at, has a very good reputation, um, I, certainly in Canada and even further afield. Um, the head winemaker there was a it was a big thing for Australian winemakers at the time. They would come in. I don't know why Australians were considered to be. Um, but tell us about that time. Ed mm -hmm. Brisson of Marvel Comics mm. drunkenly raped that donkey one night. Go on, tell us more details. That also that also never happened. Oh, uh, sorry, um, but. Uh, but anyways, one thing I do remember is like, so because it was an organic winery, they, they used fish, like fish fertilizer. Okay. So there was this, like, there was this massive uh, building up at the kind of the back of the winery where all of the, the new vines were kind of kept in these huge tanks full of like stinky fish water. And it was um, dark and revolting in there. Um, oh, yeah, I seem to remember that. It was just behind there that... Ed Brisson of Marvel Comics. Mm, yeah, that's the that, one. Draped that nun, right? <laughs> one evening. Um, yeah, no, that uh, that also did not happen. Quite. You should send um, it to Ed. Mm, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he'll be very happy. Get any confirmation on any of this? That's uh -huh. Ed Brisson of Marvel Comics. Mm. Um, serial rapist, pedophile. Um, are we allowed to say that? Yeah, why not? No, no, we're not, Clive. No, we're not. Not a lot. Not anyway, a lot fame. Nick, back to the, we're not the fame, slander, and libel friends of mine on the show. So, you know what you should do is next time we talk to Robin um, Gutter Hunter Bougie, ask mm. him. Maybe he can, maybe he can. Yes, uh, he can confirm or deny about any it. of these. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, rumors that you're, that you're inventing about uh, Ed Brisson of Marvel Comics fame. Um, anyway, nice job. I mean, you know, if you have to, if you have to work uh, in the farms, uh, winery is a pretty nice farm to work. Hmm. Yes. No. I mean, it. 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 I it did. I was definitely um, jealous of uh, of this little. It. It did make me because the thing that struck me was quite interesting. One person says there's a character. So there's a few interesting things. For instance, talking about the possibility of making wine without. Sulfur, sulfur to, to right. um, counteract the oxidization. But I was kind of confusing because you were saying like, well, I made a few batches like that and that was fine. And I couldn't quite understand, well, why is it Why is it that some, why is it a few batches would work and more wouldn't? Like, I couldn't quite understand. Mm. Um, the one thing he does say is that like, he, he'd rather have a wine with a, sh a good wine with a short shelf life. This is what I was going to say. This was my point. You point thief. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. They do say that. Um, yeah. It, it basically says something along the lines of, well, it's all well and good that you have these wines that keep for years and great years and everything. But at the end of the day, it's probably better to enjoy a fresh mm -hmm. wine um, than it is something that's kind of like, I, I suppose the point he was trying to make was even though there's this thing about, wine aging or whatever that even the very best year can't compete with a fresh really mm -hmm. good wine which is mm -hmm. counterintuitive i think to the way most people think about wine mm -hmm. and, and and also um combining it with when he tells this story about going out to someone's house and they have all these great wines and you're not allowed to drink them. it it does yeah. it it seems to me, again, and I'm far from an, an expert, but this is the I would like to be, is mm -hmm. I think the world of wine in general 
does seem to have been hijacked by posh people who yes. kind of made it seem like a very convoluted science or something mm. that you need to invest an enormous amount of money in. And it does seem a little bit as if that's kind of missing the point, right? Like, it right. shouldn't be about that. It should be about, yeah, if you, if you know, if you were lucky enough to live in a nice valley with some wineries nearby that you just some you went here and you mm -hmm. something, the same way as you go to like a a restaurant or something like you go and you just the farmer brings you out some wines and some cheeses or something and you sit mm -hmm. there and you enjoy and of course uh inevitably drink drive home but let's not talk about that mm -hmm. um but do you know what I mean it's, it's, it seems like that's the way it should be rather than right bidding with people for right for bottles of uh, ancient vinegar. So yeah. actually, Jen, Jen read a book a few years back, and I've never read it, so it would work. So I have a, I might have a recommendation for literary mm -hmm. effect that's around this whole exact thing of this obsession with wine collecting and this whole this is a talk talk, is it? I don't think so. Okay, that sounds interesting too, though. I haven't. <laughs> <Title>. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, it, it's a. Uh, it was kind of based around this very famous case of somebody who bought this bottle of wine that was supposed to be, you yeah. know, to be all and all. Yeah, it turned out to this? be. It turned out to be no. So I'm, I'll ask Jen. Oh, okay. And then yeah. I'll get back to you, and we'll we'll yeah we'll maybe I might make it as a choice because she said it was great and I never read it. So. Ah. yeah, no, um, I'd be I'd be quite interested again though. Um, not the best thing to read when you are on the wine. Although I managed to avoid going down to the company to buy some wine. So, <laughs> I'm yeah, still five five weeks now. Oof. That's impressive, Clive. It's not bad. Um, uh, no, but this is an enormously entertaining read. Yeah, not... just satisfying, fun, yeah. pleasant, com pleasant company. Somehow, somehow, hanging out with these guys is just you feel like you're just a fly on the wall, enjoying yeah. the conversations. Um, one thing that was interesting well. to me mm. was sorry, educational as well. And in yep. terms of of what, and also um, giving us a reading list of comics. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I was going to say that interested me was was the kind of back and forth between um, the winemaker and the artist over this question of what like what is it, biodynamics, whatever that whatever mm -hmm. the hell this thing is, right? This, yes. So basically, um, you know, Leroy is like one of a number of these guys who apparently are it's it's not really organic. It's it's um what it seems like is it's like witchcraft and homeopathy, right? Because like they, they these things with like you know homeopathic remedies that are like one drop of like the active ingredient in a swimming pool full of water, and yet you know and they're so you know he's talking about that, you know the our our comic book artist is like can this have any efficacy? Like you're talking about tiny diluted right. amounts, huge you know volumes of yes. water. You're just watering the plants. And he's like, no, nope, no, nope. like this, mm. these three drops of this are, you know, there's like, and then the problem with like the lunar cycle and like, oh yeah, you have to do things. And it, and, you know, it, it's, it sounds like malarkey. And our, yeah. our, our author kind of says, this seems like malarkey, but yet the people who are practicing it are like, no, 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 this is like, this is the right. way it must be done. Um, right. I was just quite interested. And, and there's a few kind of disagreements between egos and with other people who are growing wine and, yeah, some people are very much into the whole self uh, mm -hmm. uh, thing, and uh, yeah. So yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that they, it is there are you know there's not just a, a, a monolithic way of of doing it, right? Which, right. which again, I, is, there's another bit as well where they drink something which is you know it seems to be like quite a common, cheap, easy to get uh, supermarket wine, and it's like that's good, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I think there is a lot to be said for this kind of weird. Uh, we do, I think, we are in need of demystifying the the world of wine, right, and, mm -hmm. and maybe taking it back from the the clutches of these few people who probably don't really know the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
it, it's almost tempt it's almost tempting like to see if you can yeah if you would be able to pull off the taste challenge with some of the right people right there's, there's you know there's, there is always that emperor's new clothes kind of mm. you know uh vibe about these things i think yeah but um, these hipsters these fucking rich hipsters but as mentioned uh previously on another thing uh i mean, i don't know what your ex if you have a uh, my my finest wine experience was in a in a hotel in myanmar a mm. old place that had seen glory days and clearly had a crate of something magical in the cellar which i just stumbled across and it was yeah it was i mean almost every yeah every other wine i've tasted other than that is even a good wine there's that there's that slight there's the tang right there's, yep. the, sure. there's the bit that stops it from just going down and this mm. this wine was just ambrosia it was just, oh my oh it was um it mm. was like I, I don't know it was like i don't know it was like someone coming in your mouth if you were enjoying it from the point of view of the person coming in your mouth does that make sense yes sure <laughs> it's a bit recursive but yeah uh, yeah okay yeah if you see what i mean i was getting the pleasure mm. of the release the, but with the <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is getting confusing um, um yes hmm. but um Yes, but I don't was, know that I've ever had an experience quite, quite so, yeah. so wonderful. I, I, would, I would say the most expensive thing I've ever drunk was um, my wife's uh, father some years back uh, was gifted. Uh, possibly, if this would happen occasionally if somebody couldn't pay their bills um, for like a, a construction job. I was going to say, would... is he an enforcer or something? <laughs> no, he would get paid in stuff. I remember at one point there was actually a uh, there was a Greek restaurant that had just opened. We did all the glazing, and then they were like, "We can't pay you, but here's gift certificates for the restaurant." And so I ate some spectacular Greek meals, mm -hmm. like coming in with like hundred dollar gift certificates. All right, give me a hundred dollars worth of Greek food. Um, but uh, but no, he got like a I, I think it was I think that's anyway. He got a case of of like a very famously good year of Dom Perignon. Um, and so he would open one bottle a year, like on New Year's, and I would be inevitably at the house okay. on New Year's. And so for about 10 years, I had a glass of like very, very good champagne. And and it was good? Yes. Yeah. But that's yeah, champagne. It, was, it is champagne. It's not, yeah, it's, it's a sparkling wine. Um, but, uh, I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm partial to the Italian reds myself i right? like a nice sartori um i find that those for me go down easy and have less of that kind of like yeah right uh, they're not acidic they don't they don't right i don't like a wine that causes me to be awake at night with heartburn mm. but um yeah so i would recommend i mean this is not something i expected to read this just kind of I, something i suddenly became aware of. i read about it in the economist of all places Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, that sounds good. Took a punt on it, and uh, yeah, turned out to be. Yeah, no, good. I, I would yeah. definitely, I would recommend this. I, yes. I, uh, me too. I had a lot of fun with this. So yes. yeah, if you want a, a comic that's um, you know, slightly less, uh, you know, um, rod stiffening than maybe Druna, um, right. but uh, but you know, you'll you'll learn something. You'll laugh. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Until next time, then we're, I'm sure we'll get back to some filth of some sort. Um, Very soon. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, please go to our Patreon page if you want to donate to our uh, victims of Ed Brisson of Marvel Comics, uh, because it's truly terrible what that man's got away with over there. So, um, mm -hmm. until then, indeed. See you, Ed. Bye. Just joking. Or online.